Hello and welcome to the final part of my journey through the Prague Metro, at least until the year 2462, when the D-Line will open. Please like and subscribe and let's get straight to the first station, which is Letniany. Letniany is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. This station is quite interesting, owing to the fact that it's literally located in a field. The reason behind why this is the case is quite interesting. In 2007, Prague submitted a bid for the 2016 Summer Olympic Games. A lot of new venues were supposed to be built, a considerable amount of which would be located in Letniany. People would need a way to get to the new stadiums, and so, it was decided that the C Metro line would be extended from Ladvi to Letniany. Everything was going great until AIG and big American banks did a little trolling, which resulted in the global economy going down the toilet in 2008. The station was built and opened, but the bid for the 2016 Summer Olympics was withdrawn in 2009, leaving the station sitting in the middle of a field. At least there's a bus terminal and the PVA Expo Praha Expo Center. Anyway, now that you have your master's degree in Prague history, let's go down into the station. The station is single platform and gives off this modern vibe. The platform also features these blue light strips that flash when a train is arriving. Overall, a good station with an interesting origin story. The only really bad thing about it is the relative distance from everything else. 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Prosek. Prosek is a double platform station located in a district of the same name. It opened in 2008, just like Letniany. Because of that, the station looks modern. After emerging from the underground, I found myself next to a park located in the middle of a small commie block district. Farther away from the commie blocks, there are numerous single family houses. A few bus stops are located within a short walk of the station, making it decently well connected. As of November 2023, the only trolley bus line in Prague goes through here. Overall, I like this station, 7 out of 10. Next up, Stryškov. Stryškov is a double platform station located in a district of the same name. This station is located underground level, but its modern steel and glass building makes it look less deep than it actually is. This is probably the most unique building on the whole Prague Metro network. The only public transport building that even comes close is the Gberandovu tram stop. After walking out of the doors, I found myself in the middle of a commie block housing district. There are also a few bus stops around the station, like your average Soviet-era housing estate. There's not really much to note about this station, except for the building. Overall, a decent station with a unique building, 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Ladvi. Ladvi is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. The planners of the sea line didn't seem to have their creative juices flowing when naming these stations. After getting out of the station, I emerged onto a pleasant pedestrianized square with numerous businesses and a small shopping mall. The square itself is surrounded by housing, some old, some new. On the southern side, there is a road with a tram line running right through the middle. In terms of transit connectivity, there's a tram and bus stop right next to the station. Overall, I like Ladvi. The square is really nice, and the transit connections are good, and it serves a lot of potential customers. 7.5 out of 10. Next up, Kobylisi. Kobylisi is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. After riding up the escalators, I found myself next to a shopping center, near an intersection of two streets, one of which has tram tracks running through it. There is lots of housing on said streets, and a government office building is located right next to the station. In terms of transit connections, there is a tram line, which branches out into two lines, and there are lots of bus stops, making Kobylisi quite well connected. Overall, a decent station. I like the station design, I believe that the orange works very well. 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Nádraží Holešovice. Nádraží Holešovice is a single platform station, located in the Holešovice district. The trip between Kobylisi and Nádraží Holešovice is the longest distance between two Prague metro stations clocking in at 2,749 meters, or roughly 9,000 feet. The shift from newer, more modern stations to older, less colorful ones is apparent when pulling up into this station. The walls are darker and the ceiling is lower down. After rolling up the escalators, I entered a bus terminal, located on a street with tram tracks going through the middle. The railway station, from which the name Nádraží Holešovice comes, is located a few minutes walk away. There's not much housing near to the station, just a few businesses, like this McDonald's. Overall, I have mixed feelings on Nádraží Holešovice. It is a good transit hub, but the station design isn't great. 
The bus terminal around it also becomes a meeting point of numerous junkies and other similar people at night. 6 out of 10. Next up, Vltavská. Vltavská is a single platform station and the first one not to be named after the district it's in. Before we continue, we have to talk about this road. This is the Severijní Magistrála and from now on I will call it the North-South Highway. It's not technically a highway, but I mean look at it. Alright, back to Vltavská. The station lies in the Holešovice district, in the shadow of the North-South Highway. Vltavská continues the trend of lower ceilings and darker color palettes that Nádraží Holešovice started. Riding up the escalator, I noticed that it was surprisingly long, owing to the fact that Vltavská is quite deep underground, despite it not being dug using tunnel boring machines. After walking out of the doors, I found myself in front of a tram and bus stop, located in the shadow of the aforementioned highway. The area around the station is unfortunately full of wide roads, crossing which takes quite a long time. At least the legendary electrical company's building stands near the station. This building was the headquarters of the company that runs Prague Public Transport from the 1930s to the late 90s. Overall, I don't like Vltavská. The highways really ruin the landscape. I'm not the biggest fan of the station building, and the platform is a bit dark and depressing. Quite fitting, considering that this station was built during Soviet times. 5.5 out of 10. Next up, Florence. Florence is a single platform transfer station for the BNC lines, located in a district of the same name. Like Vltavská, it is located in the shadow of the North-South Highway, although not as much as Vltavská. After walking out of the station, I found myself at an intersection of two pretty wide roads in front of some mid-rise buildings, both old and new. Like previously mentioned, the North-South Highway looms over the landscape. Near the eastern exits, there's the Florence bus terminal, a large hub for long-distance bus lines. In terms of transit connections, there are the aforementioned long-distance buses, but there's also the B metro line and a tram and bus stop. Overall, I don't really like Florence either. The wide roads and the freeway above makes it a really unpleasant place to be, and the station building doesn't help either. 6 out of 10. Next up, Hlavní nádraží. Hlavní nádraží is a double platform station located under the Prague Bain train station. It's one of two Prague metro stations located directly under train stations, the other one being Smichovské nádraží on the B line. After walking up the stairs or escalators, I found myself in the station building. From there, I could have gone to the platforms, which are about a 2-3 minute walk away. Alternatively, I could have walked out of the station into the Vrchlického Sady Park, better known as Sherwood. The park is known as Sherwood because of the strange people that hang out there at night. Hlavní nádraží was the first station to be constructed, originally planned as a station for an underground tram before the line was converted into a true heavy metro. Because of that, the station is double platform compared to almost all of the original stations of the C metro line, which are all single platform, with the exception of Vyšehrad. In terms of transit connections, Hlavní nádraží is connected to the main train station, there's a few tram stops a few minutes walk away from the station, and there's a bus stop in the top part. Overall, I find Hlavní nádraží to be an okay station. Not my favorite, but I respect the connection to the train station. 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Museum. Museum is a single platform transfer station for the A and C lines, located on the top of Wenceslas Square in the city center of Prague. It's one of two stations located on Wenceslas Square, the other being Mustek on the A and B lines. The station has numerous exits, most of which end up near the statue of St. Wenceslas on the square. However, the one I use dumps you next to the National Museum and in front of our old friend, a branch of the North-South Highway. The highway splits in two around the National Museum for some bizarre reason. The highway continues like this up to the Nusle Bridge, where it connects back together. In terms of transit connections, there's the A metro line and a tram stop a few minutes walk away. There's also the B metro line, which is slightly farther away, but still easily reachable on foot. Overall, Museum isn't one of my favorite stations, but it's far from the worst. Although the branch of the aforementioned freeway makes it lose points. 6 out of 10. Next up, IP Pavlova. IP Pavlova is a single platform station located in the new town district. It is named after Ivan Petrovich Pavlov, a Russian neurologist and physiologist. After walking out of the station, I stood next to a massive intersection, featuring both branches of the North-South Highway, so overall, a definitely super quiet, pleasant place to be. 
this place is also ingrained into the memories of those who ever got fined for riding public transport without a ticket, because the office where you're supposed to pay the fine is not far from here. The surroundings of the station consist of dense, older buildings, full of housing and numerous businesses like banks, restaurants and more. At least the station is decently well connected to other modes of transport, with a tram line running through here and a bus stop being located nearby. IP Pavlova is one of my least favorite stations, due to the mess of car traffic running through the area. 5 out of 10. Next up, Vyshehrad. Vyshehrad is a double platform station located in the Nusla district. The reason behind why the station is double platform is this, the Nusla bridge, or more accurately, this, the tube under the road that the metro runs through. The tube had to be made as narrow as possible to fit under the bridge, and so, a double platform station was required. The station is located on the surface, right next to the Prague Congress Center and the bane of all drivers in the city, the Vehicle and Driver Registration Office. The North-South Highway also runs over the station. In terms of transit connections, unfortunately, there are none. Overall, Vyshehrad is a quite unique station, unfortunately without transit connections and in the shadow of a highway. 5.5 out of 10. Next up, Pražského povstání. Pražského povstání is a single platform station located in the Nusle district. This is the only station to be named after a historical event. Pražského povstání refers to the Prague Uprising, an uprising that happened from the 5th to the 9th of May 1945. Basically, the Czech people rose up against German occupiers, ensuring the liberation of Prague and the rest of Czechoslovakia. Back to the station, there are pretty wide roads in the front and a tram line which runs to Pankrác. The station is surrounded by office and commercial developments, plus some housing. The most important building nearby is the Ministry of the Interior, located right next to one of the exits. After walking out of the station, I emerged near a small shopping center and the Ministry of the Interior building. In terms of transit connections, there's the aforementioned tram line and there are also multiple bus stops. Overall, Pražského povstání is an okay station. Not the best, but not the worst. 6 out of 10. Next up, Pankrác. Pankrác is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. The station is located in a Soviet-era housing district, but lately, new, modern office buildings have been springing up. The most notable symbol of this new era of Pankrác is the Arkady Pankrác shopping mall, which has a direct entrance to the metro station. After getting out of the station, I walked out in front of the Arkady Pankrác shopping mall, next to a wide road. In regards to transit connections, there's a bus stop and the terminus of a tramline, which was opened in 2021 in preparation for the temporary closure of the Pankrác metro station. This is due to the fact that Pankrác will become a transfer station for the C and D metro lines in the future, so it will have to be temporarily closed for construction. Overall, the surroundings of Pankrác are quite nicely developed and the station is decently well connected as well. 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Budějovická. Budějovická is a single platform station located in the Krč district. It is located in the middle of a shopping center, the centerpiece of which is the Oce DBK mall. There's also a big communist era housing estate and some single family houses. In terms of additional transit, there's a bus stop right next to the station. Other than that, there's not really much to say about the station. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Next up, Kacherov. Kacherov is a single platform station located on the border of the Krč and Michla districts. The station sits right under a bus terminal, near some multi-family houses, a commuteblock housing estate and the Praha Kacherov train station. A notable thing about the station is that Kacherov was the last station of the original segment of the sea line, which was opened in 1974. Other than that, I don't think that this station is that notable. It does its job well, so like Budějovická, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Next up, Rostily. Rostily is a single platform station located in the Chodov district. The station is quite isolated, being located quite far away from the housing estate it's supposed to serve. At least some office buildings have been built nearby. In terms of transit connectivity, there's a small bus terminal right in front of the station. One thing I find interesting about Rostele is the design of the platform. It gives off a dark, minimalist vibe, typical for buildings of the 1970s and 1980s Eastern Bloc. Other than that, there's nothing much to Rostele. 6 out of 10. Next up, Chodov. Chodov is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. 
The station is surrounded by communist-era housing blocks on one side and single-family houses connected to the station via an overpass over the D1 highway on the other. The centerpiece of development around the Chodov metro station is the Westfield Chodov shopping mall. With over 300 stores, it is the largest shopping mall in the Czech Republic by number of stores. Westfield Chodov is truly a cathedral of consumption, with three floors of shops and three floors of parking. Chodov is connected to the rest of the transit network by a bus station located right next to it. Overall, a decent station, 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Opatov. Opatov is a single platform station located in the Chodov district. After emerging from the station, I walked through a small shopping area and I found myself in Centrální Park, a big park, most likely named after Central Park in New York. In terms of transit connectivity, there's a bus station. Overall, Opatov is an unremarkable station, 6 out of 10. And now, the last station, Háje. Háje is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. After emerging from the station, I felt like I got transported into the year 1986. Ignoring the western brands, the shopping area and housing estate that surround the station look like they haven't moved on from the late 80s. The tallest commie block of the city is also located here. The building, named Kupa, is 22 stories tall. It's connected to another tall commie block with a bridge leading from the top floor. In terms of transit connectivity, there are some bus stops near the metro station. Overall, I'm giving Haye a 6.5 out of 10 for the density around the station. Alright, this concludes my journey through the Prague metro, at least until like 400 years later when the D-line opens. I hope that you've enjoyed this series, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!